Every Saturday is Cat Day on Echoplex Media, and not only are we posting fucking cats, we invite all content creators to join our open panel. Visit echoplexmedia.com slash panel to learn how to join. Every third Saturday is Operation Catterday, where we cover this week and last year and play the best clips from the cast of conspiracy characters that Now Space has learned to loathe. The show starts at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia. Find our full schedule at echoplexmedia.com. I don't know what they're smoking over there at Princeton. I'm white and I've got everything I need. No one clutches their presses when they're in a room alone with me. And I can drive for any neighborhood I please. At any hour, and the police don't do a thing. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I got everything I need. I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree And I can walk down the streets after dark, no one wants to rape me And I can get a girl pregnant and just as easily flee Just like my straight white male dad did to me So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need I've got a pile of broken mirrors And I'm walking under ladders And I'm spilling tons of salt But to me that doesn't matter Cause my skin and my gender and my orientation Are the best things to have if you live in this nation I recommend it highly So if I see a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Everybody, welcome to the Intellectual Dollar Tree. We do this show live every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific, right here on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. And, uh... Just to remind everybody, we went ahead and uh, put uh, old Brett and Heather out to pasture last week. So that was well, that was a lot of fun. I'm glad we did that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm producer Dave. Uh, you can find me on Grinder, and I don't know. Go to website echoplexmedia.com and find ways to give us money. And I'm HK Perrin. You can find me on Mastodon at hperrin at port eighty seven dot social. Fantastic. So w- since we decided we were going to kind of try to change things up a little this week, you know what we're going to do? We're going to actually watch somebody who generally agrees with us. We're going to watch um, a show that does exactly what our show does. Hmm. Okay. But we're not going to watch them. The show's Decoding the Gurus, like full disclosure. Chris from Decoding the Gurus has been an online friend of mine for a very long time. Came out of new atheism, just like we did. He's been a guest on the intellectual dollar tree. And, um, we're going to watch their episode about their show, basically. Like, they have a thing that they do it for their patrons called the guru where they have, like, a few different categories that they'll rate different people they cover on. I don't want to get too much into it because they're going to explain it during this, but I just thought it might be kind of fun to compare and contrast what we do, which is, like, kind of completely off the fucking leash with what they do as uh, two academics covering uh, the greatest minds the world, ha- world has to offer, as they call it. So, um, yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to do this. This is from uh, December of 2020. So this is a few years old and, um, I don't know how this is going to go, but I figured if we're going to change, make a change of pace, I figured this is about as big a change of pace as we could ever fucking make around here. <laughs> so here, without any further ado, this is, uh, calibrating the gurometer from, uh, Chris and Matt of decoding the gurus on this computer. We are recording. We are. Good morning, Matt. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> so, would you like to tell me why you've called this very special meeting? <laughs> At this very <laughs> reasonable hour of the mm. uh, day. Um, yes, because I thought that the thing you really want to do before you go to sleep is to spend like, I don't know, we always say like 30 minutes, but it never ends up like that, um, discussing mm. the 
weigh the the gurometer and the various measurements that we uh, might want to use to calibrate such a device that doesn't exist as of yet. Yes, yes. So, and, yeah, that, the, that, that, like, that was explained with my usual, you know. Oh, and everybody, you get to decide which one is Dave and which one is HK. You can play a little game during this. For clarity. But <laughs> yeah. I, I think I pitched it to you as calibrating the guru. Gurometer. So I have to the in all those terms. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think you're gaslighting me with your explanations. Like, <laughs> like all the words make sense, but it's like, is that, was this both? You know, you you haven't seen my academic presentations. I'm like just <laughs> gaslighting the entire audience all the time. <laughs> They're like, was I meant to understand that? Um, yeah. Okay. So okay. Well, okay. First question for you. Um, it, for what you said, it's kind of, I get the feeling that you're thinking it's going to be like multidimensional with different, different, different things. No, 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 no. Okay. I, I, because I, well, so this is, this is, you know, the useful chat. And by the way, <laughs> cheers, Matt. Yes. <laughs> oh, they're drinking alcohol too. Look at that. They are us. Mm -mm. The, <laughs> so like the, the way I see it, there's a ton of ways that we could go, but we don't use a if fake backdrop, though. This is all real. Like it, That's where to, I work. You know, do a whole bunch of stuff that I don't want to do. Well, so this like, is where I work, too. It's just zoomed in, and all you can see is the small part of the wall. The whole rest of this, there's snakes, actually. <laughs> I want to keep it relatively <laughs> light and not make it a chore. And then for that, I think the easiest thing is that it's unidimensional, that all of the scores are pointing in the same direction, and that we basically you and I can just independently... The snakes weren't your idea, right? They were a gift uh, from a viewer. Each episode. Mm, yep. And then at the end, maybe we can discuss, right? And we don't have to go through each like yeah. thing. Just where we differ uh, like significantly might be interesting. And But what I... So one of the things I thought about that as well... And by the way, if any of this, you can just, you know, uh, disagree yeah, with I'll, it's just my idea. <laughs> yeah. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is set in stone. Is that... Uh, so like we talked about on the ContraPoints episode, there's an issue about whether scoring high on it is a bad thing or mm. a neutral thing, right? And mm. I, because like I, like we said, we're not saying in the episode that we don't want to say that being a guru is necessarily bad. But if yeah. Oh, that's a place where we differ from them, HK. Do you and I pretty much generally agree that being a guru is not, not a good thing, right? Yes, depending on what you mean by that. Being like a public intellectual, like the kind that we cover is absolutely bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's people we agree with, like the sort of guru-y part of it, because we'll, we'll use their language, right? The guru-ish part of it. Even if it's people we like, we're like, oh, I wish you wouldn't do that shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> Garometer, such that a high score in it is, makes you a bad guru, then that mm. implies... So, but I kind of think that's the easier way to do it because things like Galaxy Brand takes, right? If, if we make a, a score for that or we make a score for uh, like profiteering, grifting, like these, these will all lead to uh, like high scores, high negative scores. And I don't really see a way to do it where we uh, have like positive and negative attributes equally leading to a score because that wouldn't really make sense yeah but i'm confused because you said before that you just want to have like one one score mm. it'd be really, really simple but you sort of hint to get there being different things oh like yeah but grifted, i mean grifted. so i when like i thought you were talking about the like factors in it and i'm thinking of a like a, a score of some on like between five to ten whatever is a reasonable amount of like things for us to decide are important is it really the right approach to it's try and like quantize mind. someone's like guru-ness well that's what i'm saying is this is like these are this is why this was kind of once they kind of get into like the meat of it and what they're talking about i think this is gonna be kind of fun because it's compare we're gonna be able to compare and contrast what we're doing with what they're doing even though <clears throat> i mean i listen i listen to their podcast their podcast is pretty good 
that's why I think it's going to be interesting because these two are like academics, right? <laughs> they they mentioned galaxy brainness and uh, they they would score high <laughs> on the galaxy brainness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just, just, uh, just because of, of what they do. So it's just like a different approach. That's why it's, um, it's, that's why it's, I thought it would be fun to go over this and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this will be our okay. worst episode of this show. Who knows? <laughs> Number, right. But they all just add up collectively. So, uh, if you get five, 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 then, you know, the, so the, the kind of, yeah, they, that they, there's an, there's a top score that you can get and that would make you like a very that might make you like scott adams or uh yeah, yeah that's mm. oh we should explain like my earlier comment about like yeah. the so, kind of people who are like gurus that we cover yeah that is a bad thing but i what i meant was like there's a different kind of like someone called a guru that I think is a good thing. And it's just someone with a lot of expertise in a field who tries to teach that expertise to other people. So like you might, you know, if you're uh, like really good at like C code, like coding in, in C and you like make a lot of videos online about how to code in C, like people might call you like a C guru. And that's a good guru as opposed to like the clean your room before you criticize society kind of guru that's well, right. a shitty guru <clears throat> and i think like i don't think that in in their case they're talking about you know people with per specific expertise like uh yeah. you know like a like a network security guru or whatever yeah i don't think i don't think they're talking about it in that way i think they're almost exclusively talking about it in the way that you and i uh discuss it on this show they're just uh they're, they're okay, definitely yeah. doing uh yeah. they're definitely doing a trying to do an academia on it which i think is is kind of funny and sort of interesting just because we are certainly not trying to do that in any sort of way <laughs> we're trying to hurl insults make jokes and uh impugn everyone's character as much as possible around here <laughs> so what do you think hmm <sighs> Don't put your psychometrician uh, uh, hat on, put, put, because no. the yeah, the it, we don't want to oh, make no. it work. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, um, so I guess my concern is okay. No, I guess that's all right. Hmm. I also yeah. wouldn't let you sit and think for that long. <laughs> with it being like a like i'm sure we can come especially up if you're talking about your thought process but you're not relaying it things interesting things to you know like to what degree do they are they giving you sort of rules for life and you know yeah or, or like the, um but it's kind of hard to choose because there's, there's i just mentioned them, the like, the 12 rules for life now, and there's, a, there's a lot of them <laughs> and i don't think we want to do all of them, like in some ways, like f for the point of view of that sort of research paper type stuff that you were thinking of, I think I think it's more, it's probably more pragmatic to just go for a kind of a coding thing where it's like present or not present sort of thing. Is this does this person do this kind of thing or not? You know, it's you, you know and your saying? binary measures. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, no, no. I'm thinking quality. You know, I'm coming to the, I'm coming to I'm embracing qualitative coding here. Oh. Um, but, yeah, uh, but the, uh, qualitative binary <laughs> that's that's what essentially that's what in my to my mind that's what qualitative is it's basically just binary uh -oh. things you know how, it's like how you, dare you matt how dare you that's the yeah the, it's, that's what it is it's like you know is uh is a chris member of the ira or isn't he it's binary there's shades scored. of gray matt The shades of gray in that question is there is there you could be an affiliate a friend uh, uh like a <laughs> have your provisional membership Anyway. Provisional IRA. Mm. Oh yeah, provisional IRA. <laughs> so okay. So the, yeah, well, I had mm. the same thought that like if we uh, if we tried to do it properly, it would be like a long thing. I like would imagine at least kind of ten, but that would might be a pain. Though it might not be if it's just a matter of you know like one to fiveing people on like 10 metrics that like doesn't take that much time the idea but, but what i like is i like i like the sound of and again you just just hear me out and see whether this might work but 
like imagine like you could have 10 or we could even add to it you know as we wanted to but it's just kind of like a like a tick and flick thing like did do they do this kind of thing or don't they right but then what but I, I, essentially fun what fact I that's how you diagnose adhd well. because because this kind of quality it is kind of qualitative <laughs> like like they don't necessarily add up to make you a guru you know like i think i think in the end we like i i think we i think we'd be better off just giving people a, a like a score just on our gut instinct of how how bad or good that person is you know that's what i'd like yeah he wants to be I on like this how show he's, he's basically talking about like clinically diagnosing someone as a guru yeah that, that's why <laughs> that's why this is so interesting right because every once in a while i'd be like hk did you learn anything today <laughs> <laughs> and they're yeah they're trying to almost make like a like a clinical or like a like an academic approach to uh, that which is pretty funny and to be fair like this this went out to their patrons this wasn't like this didn't go out on the main podcast feed so this is just, they were kind of chatting about this gurometer that they sort of put together sort of ad hoc at the beginning of their podcast like to do something <laughs> for their patrons so this is you know they're not they're not doing this as a broadcast per se here okay so i i'll i i can see the logic to what you're saying but the my thought is it depends on what the factors are you pick, right? Because like, for example, if we had the like uh, amount diversity of subjects tackled or something, right? Like the kind of the thing that I would consider like galaxy brain, right? Hot takes on lots of different subjects or are you a specialist in one thing? And that's what you mainly talk about. So yeah. if we if we took like the diverse coverage as a high score like say a five right a one to five scale mm. then you had you know monetization and like level of profiteering or from you know are you selling uh supplements and that kind of thing and t-shirts mugs uh, oh well, fuck like one to five right again so you've got <laughs> that and then you have uh like <laughs> Okay. I mean, I'm, we all got to make money, right? That's ones, but I'm just uh, just a consequence of living under capitalism. Yeah, but I guess like, and and that's probably what they're you're, they're kind of talking around here is like, is there a difference between monetizing uh, your content and then grifting and taking taking advantage of your audience? Do you know what I'm hmm. like? Yeah, I would say there is. Like, monetizing your content is just to me that's like. You know, hey, if you like my content, you can support me by buying these things. Whereas a grift is more like, you need to buy this because if you don't, bad things will happen. And usually the bad things are like, you know, you'll, you need to buy this because, um, you know, the, the left is coming to eat your baby. Right. And the, the, so pr the buy primary. This, buy this baby protector. Like the most obvious example here would be Alex Jones, where he's like, you need to fight the new world order by buying the fucking iodine pills. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like that's full on grift. Right. You know, no one needs those pills at all. Uh, and he's not saying buy these to support me. He's saying, like, buy these or the world will be destroyed or whatever. You know, right. like he says some fucking crazy things. <laughs> right. Oh no. To try was, and get you to buy those. Oh no, I was listening to I was yeah, I was listening to an episode of another podcast today about some of the shit he was saying. Oh man, great. Everybody make sure you're following the Knowledge Fight podcast, but you're already following the Knowledge Fight podcast if you watch my channel. Like level of self aggrandizement, right? Like one to five, or level of conspiracy mongering, one to five, so on. And my if you had those kind of measures, right? And you had like five, five, five. Wait, five, we five. should just steal this from them. The gurumeter? Yeah, we should just the steal it from them. <laughs> it sounds like they're going to do all the work for us. Um, I mean, if we ask them, they'd probably be okay <laughs> with us using it. <laughs> I don't think theft needs to be involved. <laughs> and you had somebody that was like... Eric Weinstein or something like that. I think they would score. Oh, he would only get a two out of five on the self-aggrandizement scale, obviously. <laughs> Actually, a negative two. He is the world's most humblest man. Points. Yeah, he's score. he's so humble. Whatever the the highest score is, he'd get the inverse of that. That's right. You know the the negative value of that times negative one. 
low Lower. on those yeah. measures and it would and that to me would capture something meaningful but i can also say that like it makes sense to have a, like a tick box like do they sell supplements yes no right because like i think that's an interesting thing but you could know, do both like, and you could know. weigh them differently i mean if you guys I mean, if these costco guys, sells supplements if i mean if these guys really wanted to get into the weeds they could they could have a, a one to five scale for certain things and then tick boxes which were either zero or five points whether or not you tick the box i mean they could, they could get really kind of kind of granular into this like i don't think it's necessarily the supplements, supplements. like th there are people that sell things just as useless as supplements um uh, i think the the thing is like do you focus on uh, like with the products that you're selling, do you focus on like buy these to improve your your life or buy these to to keep bad things from happening to you? Whereas, you know, if you're just slapping your logo on a shirt and telling people buy this if you want to pr help promote us, like the shirt's not going to improve your life. And you're not saying the shirt's going to improve your life. I don't you know, know if you ever had a really it's good very shirt. obvious that like you're you're buying the shirt just because you enjoy the content. So you want to have a shirt with that logo on it. Whereas with the, the supplements, a lot of times they'll make some really fucking crazy ass claims with the supplements. Like take these and you'll, you'll have telekinesis brain force. Haven't you ever had a really good shirt though? <laughs> it does improve your life. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cause I think in a qualitative way, like if someone is shilling, uh, herbal, supplements or brain brain enhancers it actually is a kind of very straightforward acid test for their level oh, of like i don't here's know, a good question though what about vagina eggs like all <coughs> the people that we know that are the like if you're, sure if you're selling down. those is that like equal to supplements or is that even worse than supplements because not only do you not need to put an egg in your vagina you shouldn't put an egg in your vagina. She did stop like, selling. Especially not a jade egg, because jade is porous. You shouldn't have porous things in your vagina. Once this was pointed out to Gwyneth Paltrow, but only, af only after she probably made you know tens of thousands of dollars on it, she pulled the product. No. Are, are like the, le the lesser responsible, more guru-tastic people. So, mm. yeah. so, yeah. I don't know. The, 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 that's... My Do you think Gwyneth is Paltrow is a is a guru? I think she is. I think yes. she would qualify. Yes, yeah. I of course she has all the attributes. The problem, the problem, yeah. and I've thought about covering her. She doesn't take a lot of interviews or do like enough content that's long enough form for us to really dig into it. And I think that we could just watch Iron Man movies. <laughs> and I, and I and I think that I don't think the that Chris and Matt have covered her either. I could be mistaken because I haven't listened to everything they've ever done, but I think they probably ran into much the same problem I did where she if she does take interviews, it's not really about like her health and wellness stuff. She like just kind of it's like more yeah. like very generic sort of feel good like faux feminism almost. So yeah, it's it's not it's not it's not like Alex Jones or, or Tim Pool or whatever. It's different. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, it would be hard to cover her, her, I guess, products because, yeah, there's not really a whole lot of like content around it. So, yeah. Funny on the podcast, or it could be, you know, interesting to have a thing where we have a guru who hits the top score right uh, and somebody who gets a low score like that might be interesting i guess your version though doesn't prevent that from happening but it makes it more uh gestalt mm. view. yeah 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 it would so i mean what's the goal here i mean if the goal's to generate material for use in a paper then we're gonna need more like the two of us um giving ratings isn't gonna that, help see isn't that easy because if we have the our ratings right like we have an excel document that has our ratings and it's so easy to source 
additional readers. Hey, Dave, I got a, I got another right, interesting just, question for you. Is it what related about, to what we're watching? Yeah. Okay. What about like, uh, so the, the Quivering owns a coffee company, you know, coffee brand coffee, and he promotes that through his, his content. So would that fall under the same category as like selling supplements? Right, because think, he he is doing it to supplement his own income, like his. That's not what selling uh, supplements is. <clears throat> no, 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 maybe a better I way. I was to, using the word in a different context, but maybe a, meaning maybe, of the a, word. maybe a better way to ask the question versus supplements is: Are you selling like these any white label products that are available to basically anyone, slapping your logo on them, calling your own, and telling people that they're going to get benefit from it? Because he's not okay. having his own coffee brewed and Alex Jones isn't having the supplements made. Do you know what I'm saying? They're just taking like white label products that are available. I don't know. On like AliExpress or wherever you would buy such a thing. <clears throat> Slap, yeah, he claims slapping that their he logo on, his own coffee. They may not even be the ones slapping their own logo on it. It may be like fucking print on demand. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. So maybe, maybe a better question would be, are you selling white label products with your logo on them versus. Okay. Yeah. But that would be different than like merch that is uh, specifically to promote your brand, right? Because these are products that you're going to use. Yeah, you use a beanie, right? But not in the same way that you use coffee or you would use a supplement. Yeah, I guess it's more like the purpose. Like, why are you selling it? Like, if you're selling that that content and telling your your users not users, customers telling your, you know, the people who are watching you, if you're telling them like you, you can support me and my efforts by buying this one thing from me instead of like the grocery store, then yeah, I think that that is where you cross the line into like guruism. <laughs> Or or grifting specifically, yeah. Or or maybe when you claim that this coffee is like the best fucking coffee in the world or whatever, when you're just white, it's just some coffee roaster that allows you to white label their product that's being sold by other people. Yeah, maybe it is the best coffee in the world, but you didn't make it. You have nothing to do with its production, actually. Yep. (laughs) Ah, you just hire people, or you you know get RAs or whatever. So our proof of concept uh, thing could just be it doesn't even like if we actually made a paper or something out of it it wouldn't necessarily require our our readings could just mainly be for entertainment and our own like I'm, I'm quite curious to see if you and I agree independently like when we're doing things or if we you know, you end up saying somebody is like a complete crypto and I'm like, no, this guy's you know, not monet- Yeah, what's the problem? Like, I, yeah. I'm, where would you, on the scale of one to five, where would you put Jordan Peterson on a like grifting monetization scale? Oh. With oh, five being like monetize everything, sell his like spit in a bag or... <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Peterson bathwater. <laughs> oh God, I bet that shit smelled crazy. But they're getting into something. They're sort of getting into what we were talking about, right? Just like just monetizing. Yeah. If he's just and he doesn't use Patreon anymore or whatever, but at the time when he was making a lot of money on Patreon, I'm not sure that that that's as mu- as grifty as Alex Jones yeah. selling the super male vitality. That does not seem to me like a grift. Um, and even like the coffee brand coffee thing doesn't really seem like a grift because it's not like he's saying, uh, you know, this this coffee will improve your life. Um, or if you don't drink this coffee, you're going to get like your your coffee gland is going to die. Uh, you know, he's he's just selling coffee. But also uh, also to whereas, be fair, also also real quick, I think like the, the, the the, the comparison of Jordan Peterson to um, uh, the quartering is not even good because I don't think the quartering would even like for the the purpose of of their content. I don't think the quartering would ever be a guru. <laughs> I think he thinks he is right, but I mean that's step one, I suppose. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, for Alex Jones, it's definitely like a grift because he he'll say things like, "If you don't take you know super male vitality or whatever, you're gonna be less of a man. You're gonna you know if you if you do take this, it'll improve your life and you'll have you know you'll perform better in bed and and if you take brain force, your brain will grow three sizes and and your skull won't even be able to contain it and your skull will just explode and your brain will get so massively huge. That's actually that's a, he's a tricky one actually cuz um which is actually called encephalopathy, I think. Um because I I think I think you have to know about his background and his trajectory, you know. Mm. Like I, at first I somewhat naively thought he he had notoriety thrust upon him mm. yeah um and um but then you know then it, you know i think there's i think i think there's probably evidence that he kind of sorted out for that <laughs> so um so but but even that de- it depends on a bit of hypothesizing or a bit of mind reading you know what i mean like you're making a few assumptions yes. but you you you'd probably yeah so you probably know more context but just on the basis of those see that's a hard one because i mean okay so here's the thing like <laughs> we've been <laughs> this is this is academic. opening a can of worms yeah this is opening a can of worms because because i i can answer that question but i could answer it based on the content we heard yeah mm. which is which is that's the approach we've taken you know sure we did a bit of other reading whatever but essentially we're judging and I feel really comfortable with that but um because my knowledge of the rest is very fa- fuzzy you know mm. I have a sense and so on so I'm um, um but based on the content we heard um like that's probably not true of any of them because you don't necess- like they don't off they may not spruik their patreon or their you know mm. their thing mm. in that particular thing so that's actually so that's an example of so th- these this is a good one this is a good example of how it can because create you don't problems have yeah well so it would cause i think it would cause problems if we were trying to like do uh we were trying to argue for an authoritative coding but if we were saying this is my impression and then i said so like based on your impression even if it's just from the episode and you don't know anything else where would you put jordan peterson if i forced you to put a number as a as, as a grifter as someone who's mm. trying to make money out of um low like maybe maybe one or two mm. so yeah see i would i would disagree i think that, that, that higher, but jordan like- peterson is a grifter but n- in a different way like he's he's a grifter in that like he will say something just because it will please his audience something that he doesn't really believe in but isn't that more wouldn't that be like a different category yeah then the like like, because what they're trying to and i i like respect what they're trying to do here they're trying to like say okay well we're gonna if we're gonna use grifter as a category in this we have to like figure out what the fuck that means and it can't just be vibes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for us, it I can just it, be it vibes, is... right? Because we have no pretense of like being academics and um, there's no, <laughs> <laughs> right. It could if purely vibe based content around here. No problem there. Yep. If you're, if you're giving off the grifter vibe, we'll call you a grifter. But yes, yeah, so as far as like Jordan Peterson, I think that if you, are willing to say something that you don't really believe in to gain either popularity or gain uh, monetary advantage, uh, you know, to gain something uh, like that's an attribute of like a con man, right? Right. And a grifter is a kind of con man. Yeah, but I just I don't know. We'll have to see what their what their their other categories might be. Because if there's another category that covers it, maybe they maybe in in their shoes, I would want to more narrowly define grifter. In our shoes, okay. we can just do it vibes based. This whole thing is vibes based. <laughs> like be, as you say, because of all her knowledge, like I know he monetizes a personality um, <laughs> test, right? The like based on the Big Five and. 
I know that he put his name to a business school course, uh, which was like, oh yeah, that shit's all grifty. <laughs> Having a first, first of all, personality test. Does that remind you of anything, HK? Uh, you mean like an IQ test? No, no, a personality test. Uh, what do you mean? Scientology. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, like if we were going to do something like this, we would be like similarity to Scientology would be one of the, uh, would be one of our factors. I think. <laughs> Yep. Apparently right. he designed the syllabus and stuff off, but it, you know, yeah. it was basically just rebranding a, a business school course. Yeah. And like, I, and I don't know a bunch of other things, but people have suggested to me that like he, he did a lot of weird advocacy for fossil fuels industry yeah. or, or something. Apparently, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's true, but it's mm. kind of in the, my background knowledge. So for me, it would push him up to like a three or a four because he could monetize much more, right? He could be doing, yeah. selling like Jordan Peterson branded hot pants yeah. or uh, but that's, like that's, but lobster I, sauce. Uh, but I'm very uncomfortable with the whole grifting category. Can we sell right? Echoplex yeah. branded hot pants? I mean, like take take the Obamas, yeah. Are, are they, we'd have to know, are they we'd have to like ask the people in our audience who might wear hot pants if they feel like that's exploitative. Do you know? <laughs> we should. Well, yeah. So I, I like I I agree. I think this is why it would be a good thing to uh, to discuss, like what's important to include. Because I kind of think monetizing your content is man. When you blew out there, like the smoke has all stayed around the camera. <laughs> you look like the guy from the X Files. But the uh, chucking clouds—that's the technical term for it. Chucking clouds. That, that's yeah. it. Well monetizing your content is something that like people judge very harshly on the opposing ideological side but they don't really they don't do the same when it comes to like people they agree with right and yeah. and there's a double standard there which i i recognize as well but but on the other hand i do think there's something within the sphere of gurus about people branding themselves and then using that to like JP Sears, for example, is a really good example because his content is super heavily branded with these like supplements, right? Which he, which mm. also tie in to his kind of like the whole package that he's offering. And like you talked about in the episode, he's very much aware that he's building a brand, right, that he wants to market and which he uses the money. And so I think that in the case of JP Sears, I put him like really high. And when I think of like someone like Douglas Murray, for example, I don't get that same impression, right? I get a journalist who, yes, cashes in on things and, you know, sells books and so on. So it is vibes based. So we're right. <laughs> What they're saying yeah. is we're right on like, I just get this vibe. <laughs> yep. I don't really imagine it is ineffable shilling supplements or but then how do you, most how do, of them are uneffable also. But, but then how do you do this in a way that is academically rigorous, which is what I think they're sort of trying to oh, like, not maybe necessarily that would get into a peer reviewed paper, but that is <clears throat> like somewhat rigorous, which is what, what I'm getting like at least from Chris, uh, Matt here on the left just wants to vape and drink his scotch, I think, which I appreciate, <laughs> <laughs> which I appreciate. I also appreciate that they started with good morning and one of them's drinking a beer and the other one's drinking a glass of scotch. <laughs> kind of thing. It's so to me that takes him down a little bit from that world. Whereas like a last example of someone in the middle is kind of Eric Weinstein, right? Because he, from his background, it almost seems like he doesn't need to shill supplements and stuff. And yet he does. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. Uh -uh. He could fucking make all four of us uh, upper middle class with the fucking snap of a finger and four checks. Yep. With aplomb. And like, you know, he records his own playing his ukulele yeah. like stuff for and I'm waxing lyric go about mushroom uh, like the pills or whatever, mushroom soup. So 
Yeah. So he, does he actually sell supplements? Does he? Oh yeah. His podcast is not only does he sell supplements, he, you know, like all podcasters are I mean, not Wait, Eric Weinstein sells they, supplements. They're asked to kind of personalize their ad reads. Like they give these little yeah. stories about them yeah. using the products or whatever. Eric is like so, so far into that, that he records his own like songs to promote like his own ditties uh, uh, to and like the he, I think he said on a couple of ads that the company was like saying they don't want them to do that or they don't <laughs> them to do it. But, you know this sounds very true yeah and that and then there was an episode where he mentioned that by not putting out content he was taking a significant hit on his finances um and I was I was kind of like taking back because i was thinking i thought this was just like a side hustle you know like he has a job with peter Thiel and stuff why why would he be using this as like a you know a strong source of income that's the way he presented it in that episode but yeah so anyway that's you know the insider guru baseball but it made me think that there's we we just see a lot of people shilling uh like you know supplements and herbal pills and brain force and oh they they haven't even mentioned gold <laughs> joe rogan uh, on the debate it. tonight Jones, one of the like the it. very Andy first Peter ad on it. the republican debate was for gold like mm. there definitely seems to be something about the at least willingness to sell shill supplements um mm -hmm. but that that kind of fits your thing about you know tick box yes no but yeah 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 i mean they either do or they don't really with that one with with the supplements mm. um and you know like with respect to monetization and stuff yeah it's just i guess i can imagine there are i mean a lot of the time gurus are doing this to in the, in the long game a bit like google or whatever would be providing a search engine with and losing money on it like a lot of these oh, companies yeah. you know for a long time because really what they're about is building up the brand and they're going to cash in at some later date so it's a, it's a tricky one that one but it is like profits you know people would say like jesse single for example as somebody that probably we wouldn't class you know within the the guru realm mm. like is is he grifting because he has like the super successful podcast like he built up an audience and then he monetized it right and yep. like that that to me doesn't seem illegitimate yeah i don't know i totally agree that's not grifting building up an audience and then getting getting them to give you money for your content is not grifting correct there's a way you could do it that's hella grifty but that but that's again vibes based yep <laughs> it's all vibes based well, but there are people within the, within the guru sphere who have done the exact same thing. Yeah, built up an yeah. audience and then cash so, in. So th that's why I have a problem with the grifting thing. Like I, I get it, but it's just very hard to define what's just normal monetization of someone who makes their living from doing it. Yeah, like, you know, like it's contrapoint stuff. grifting because, like, I mean, I I would put her very low on that because she doesn't seem to sell anything but obviously you know the money comes from the youtube videos and uh like yeah that stuff so mm. yeah yeah it, it, that's a tough one but yeah that's probably the hardest one in a way like i guess i mean the, it's I basically like, an evolution I, of you know like, literally I, every other I go along media uh model right it's either like you're, you're either you create ad content sorry you're either ad supported or listener supported right yeah like you create content that people want to listen to and then yeah you have two options either it's paid for by viewers like you or it's paid for by gold and supplement companies <laughs> <laughs> along with your own oh, vpns idea uh, we can, <laughs> we can look give so them, sad, sad about yeah. it. Raid Shadow <laughs> Legend. Know, the idea of giving scores to the different, to the different. Well, um, you know, the, like the, the way I'm this is how not a sponsor, I often by the way. End up in academic meetings when we decide on you know something or somebody gives in a thing is like why don't we why don't we try it and if it's like 
if it doesn't work, then we just switch. Like there's nobody holding our feet to the fire saying like, oh, but you said you would do it this yeah. way, right? Like we can, yeah. we can we play can, around. So we can even sure. say like, hey, we're doing A-B testing, right? Like uh, the, yeah. the yep, yep. Bin binary model on the, the like one to five. <laughs> HK, if we ever have a production meeting about the intellectual Dollar Tree, what we're learning here is that we should not publish it. <laughs> I like these guys, but this is a uh, yes, yes, yes. This is we quite don't tedious. Call Chris versus Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, no. Okay, so um, I, looking at that document of ours, I think I think it's a pretty good basis for for our list of um, features. Right. Uh, do, do we want to? I'm, I'm making a little. I'm making a little document here, which okay. I will share with you. Yes. I will be okay. the secretary at four. The secretary. The, okay, good. Yeah, I'll be the ideas. I'll be the ideas, man. Yeah, just for what I go, Matt. Just print. Yeah, just, um, yeah. <laughs> just, um, just don't worry about it. Go crazy. Go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a safe space for any, anything. 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 Um, throw, no. it, throw it all. Throw it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's write the one how good looking, hot or not. Yeah, how about that? Hot or not. Why yeah, not? Let's yeah, put that yeah, chili, let's chili. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they may be joking around about that, but there may be there may be something to that. Like is <clears throat> if someone's like good looking or considered to be good looking, are they leveraging that to monetize their content? I mean, I clearly on this channel is a fucking thirst trap. <laughs> 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 but like there may be a way in which you could do that, but you'd have to get like highly specific and you'd have to, and you'd like the, you'd be, have to be real careful. Like I know that this was just off the cuff and then they're not seriously suggesting that. And if you were to do that, you'd have to be pretty careful to not appear to be slut shaming anybody or, or anything like that when you were. Yeah. So I think that that would be, if we were to do something like this, we might talk about it, but that would end up being off the table just because I don't think that we would be able to do that in a careful enough way. Yeah, that's, love, okay. <laughs> that actually, you know, that makes me feel uh, amused because, uh, you know, there used to be this prof like read my professor website, mm. uh, like I think yeah. it still exists, but they had a they had a like hot or not <laughs> thing on it, and I think they eventually were forced to remove it, like because yeah. I think because of people, pro you know, kind of socially justicey people taking issue. I don't mean this in a disparaging way. I mean, like, I think there was a campaign to say this isn't a, a good metric to use. Uh, but I mm. kind of was like, oh, because, you know, I used to find it and like, I'm not, I'm not on a, you know, I'm not a professor in the US, but I did used to find it funny to look up people I know and be like, are they hot? Are they rated? <laughs> and they students think they're hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. It's, 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 you know. A guy on the left would get a lot of yes. Thing. He's hot. Why is he not got a like thing? But like the bar to be rated. They're talking about very rate my professor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they are. So okay, well, I'm, didn't get it, I'm a little lost here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Okay, so item number one, first mm -hmm. first thing. Um, I'm, I'm just going to watch through this list and we'll go. You, you, you can tell these are academics because they're 25 minutes, 22 seconds, and they're either like, okay, now item one. Put it down, but <laughs> um, first one is this guru polymath type thing where they present themselves as, yeah, special genius with unique insights across a wide range of fields. Wide, wide like range that. of areas. That's that's a key. That's a key guru guru esque. We need a thing like a catchy phrase for it, but we can come up with those like later. But especially because like polymath sounds too <laughs> sounds too nice for Oh, what? that's galaxy brain. <clears throat> yep. Like I am an expert in exactly one field. And based on how much work it takes just to be an expert in that one field, like no one, literally no one is an expert in like hundreds of fields but yeah all these guys pretend to be experts in like hundreds or even thousands of fields or just anything that comes up really yep that is like it's it's kind of being a hot tick machine across this yeah you have no expertise in <laughs> yeah yeah that's right we we need funny we need amusing and memorable 
this uh, this one is too labels. disparaging but like i can think of you know walter mitty cinch <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 you know Walter Mitty, right? That is yes. a famous story. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. That, that, your reaction tells me that's not a good <laughs> one. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Um, galaxy Brain, isn't it? Like Galaxy Brain, this? That's yeah, exactly galaxy what Galaxy Brain means. Yeah, I think it is basically <laughs> galaxy brainness. Yeah, it's the. And that's I think how we use it, right? You're not the galaxy brain. Yeah. you're just you're yeah. you're. You can be it's usually really. when somebody has a dumb take on something that you know they know nothing about. You don't necessarily need to know the answer <laughs> to, but you 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 don't need to know what the yes is to spot a no. Yep. <laughs> you cannot be a galaxy brain guru. If yeah, like if you're if you're someone like so who's just like has expertise and is smart, but in a particular area, I don't know. Like say Stuart Ritchie say, he's, he 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 put posts very smart stuff, but it's like within his realm of expertise. expertise. Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't words. sort of just you know. Oh, you know what's really going on with COVID is this. Oh you know? fuck that. He just yeah. Who are you talking that. about, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This well, is your are you referencing. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Ga- I, know, I like it. Galaxy brain, that's, brain. That's, yeah. Okay, let's lock, lock that in. Lock that in. Locked. Put it in the bank. I've, I've put it down in this <laughs> high tech document. It's, mm. it's locked in, can't be edited now, Matt. That's that's no. how it works. No. Um, mm, mm. okay. So the next one on this list is this that in group out group thing, which is about how they oh, sort of, yeah, I like, but I think that's important. Mm. Oh, that one's no, really no, easy. I... It's cult cult dynamics. Well, what do you mean by that? Like <clears throat> they're going to talk about in group out group mentality, right? Not. <clears throat> it's like how when remember when we watched that uh, David Miscavige interview and we were able to spot a lot of the rhetorical tricks he was using that we were able to that we had noticed uh, other basically uh, intellectual dark web people using, and a lot of it was that kind of oh well, it's you're all against us, everybody. It's we have okay. Yeah, it's it's the in group. It's definitely like cult mentality. To the nefarious and, and I they think you could call it um, cultishness. Oh shit, <laughs> that's, a, that's a harsh one. But again, well, <laughs> like yeah, that, yeah. I like I. They, it, by the way, can you say the word that means when you are very polis, polemically like when you have two sides and people are you know very harsh about one side but not the other side what do you call that <laughs> there's a terrible way to get you to try to say a word i want to hear you say without me pronouncing it oh okay I might like, just in the current era p ship is oh, very oh, high. Uh, not polarization no partisanship oh, partisanship okay. yeah that's it no, you didn't okay. do that because you did you on the most recent episode you said pa, like partisan in a very partisan <laughs> and i very australian yeah like, just you know because like in the episode i also say uh, parmesan ship are like wrong but you <laughs> you said partisan in a like that's like when partisan. when two oh, cheeses oh, oh, can't as agree as, yeah, on anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> so no, I was that like, was, does Matt say partisan? No, that's shit? not. That's not how I normally talk. No. <laughs> I, partisan. I, I, yo, guys, you already like, got it. It's like, fucking like, cultishness. Partisan. It's like that. that. <laughs> when, yeah. when you said it, I it made me like being you know partisan is not the same happy. thing as being I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> cultish. <laughs> Right. The, that happens to me with there's oh fuck I forget what it is now but there's a word that people use all the time and I've seen it on BBC and I think the pronunciation has just shifted but it hasn't for me and like I can't remember what it is now but it's a word that you would use as well and I, like I don't know where the memo was that the proper pronunciation shifted but I didn't get it <laughs> So, yeah. so I thought like I thought this was a similar situation. So after I heard it, it was like, "Haha, Matt got that wrong." And then, or did oh, he? Did he? <laughs> yeah, I could just be ahead of the game. I could have kicked off something. You know, it could be the beginning of a new a new trend. Um, Cultish, cultishness, cultishness, cultishness. I think I'm okay with that because I, I like it. It captures the um, the behavior. Uh, yeah, it's the behavior of the leader, but and the way they manage their flock and 
and keep them keep them in line. Did they just get really quiet? It's, it's cultishness. Yeah, yeah no, they're <clears throat> some. Not everyone is um, me. Okay, in group by group <laughs> dynamics. So it's not yeah. it's not partisanship. <laughs> it could be partisan. You can say partisan if you you know he's very partisan. Partisan. Yeah, you you can say partisan, like but right you say like that's partisanship. Yeah, like I, when I, I legitimately telling the truth that when I listened back, I was like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's one of those things of registering. Like I I've I've done it many times in episodes as well, by the way, where like I have either cut words out that were necessary for the sentence that are just not there, and like I don't know if I edited them out or I didn't say them. Um, but yeah, it's it's always surprising to me to listen back and find. It's not just like you can say because, <laughs> yeah. pecan pie, and, and usually, <laughs> but it's pecan ship. You or me <laughs> kindly cut out the like you know searching for how to pronounce a word. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm sorry for making it silly, but uh, cultishness. Yeah. The the reason I hesitate with cultishness is because it implies. A bunch of other things as well like it kind of imply primarily it implies that you're setting up a cult <laughs> like it, or that's, that's we have terms like cult of personality where we don't necessarily mean that there's a high control group happening like you know what i'm saying like yeah uh i still agree with them though that like it's not cultishness is not the best term i think for this because they're talking specifically about like in group out group like strict lines between them and like you you dissociate from is that the right word you don't affiliate yourself with the out group like you try and keep away from them right is that what they're talking about i yeah i guess you could call it like no, nah, my only rubric for this is like Scientology too. So I'd be like disconnection because that's sort of what Scientology calls it. Right. They're like, you don't associate with these people. You disconnect from them. But then that's like, it's too, too far down a different rabbit hole. Like some kind of, Ooh, somebody in chat said like internalized gatekeeping, but that's, that's not like, um, not very catchy. Yeah. Um, Kind of like how a lot of people on like the right wing and the left wing too will not have uh, someone that disagrees with them on their show, uh, but they'll talk about someone that disagrees with them all the time. Yeah, that's a, um, you know, they, and I think that's, yeah, that's, I mean, I think of that as being kind of culty, but yeah, presenting someone as the other. Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe just just calling it what they called it at the beginning, just in group out group. How have how hard do they lean on that? Would just be it's not catchy, but it describes it exactly. Yeah, implication it would give to me, right? Like, is Scott Adams cult? He is high on like uh, this, but is he setting it up? Uh, a cult or is Scott Adams is the uh, Dilbert well, guy, right? Look, That's correct. I mean, look, the thing with coming up with any single word to describe these themes is that it's always going to be inadequate, right? It's almost always. So, it, I know the first it, one you nailed. Try to think of a better one, and if you can't, <laughs> no, then... I like I get cultishness. I like so. I think you know, with any of these, we can put like a little description after it yeah so we can we can explain what we mean by it so we'll, like we'll define our terms yeah we'll yeah, define we our terms. okay yeah. so we'll for yeah. them yeah at least we don't mean uh, literally they're gonna do a jamestown type <laughs> scenario it's 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 meant to be evocative <laughs> we'll put a little star and say we're not saying they're going to do an <laughs> auction <laughs> video on the the yeah no, no. We'll, we said, we'll cover ourselves. That 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 does it, right? Like I've seen people give disclaimers that work much like much yeah. less disclaimers than they seem to work. So, yep, yeah. yep, yep. These okay. are meant to be uh, um, evocative. True. Um, cultishness. Like, in, cultishness. Oh, right. Got it. Mm. It's locked in. Yeah. Can't be edited. Okay. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, gee, there's so many good ones. Um, so the next one is grievance and resentment. Oh, that's, that is a good one. 
Yeah, towards the orthodoxies, towards the institutions, conventional. I mean, you just said it, grievance and resentment. That's it. That's not what you have to call it. You can't call it anything else. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that, that perfectly describes so many of these guys. Like uh, Eric Weinstein, for example. I guess you could call it self-crucifixion. Yeah. Uh, yeah but that's or uh victimization yeah the, yeah it's it's yeah they think you they have to just stick with the words they just used though i i wouldn't i wouldn't even change those yeah um yeah <laughs> i want and i want to use grievance because of the uh so-called squared people like i yeah. i feel it's i feel it's honoring their legacy to uh <laughs> to, and, and that's, that's where to put it <laughs> yeah to call it like grievance mongering mm. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna look at our list of our cast and just think about that a little bit Gre yeah because yeah, we were very insightful i like, like that like, grievance mongering ago, like before we yeah. started looking at anyone this is yeah that's it's quite astonishing the, really it's yeah. a, you know past us good job because that's that's a defining characteristic of like almost all the people we've covered right is how much they resent their status their position not treated as the kind of go-to like in most cases it almost seems like they're upset that the government doesn't come and ask them like what the strategy should be to deal with COVID yeah. or immigration or <laughs> yeah because like... I'm, I'm right here you know i've got all these great ideas and i'm right here and no one's consulting yeah. me don't they know who i am um, and look it's it's They're strongly related definitely to spot to on on this one yeah yeah <laughs> yes that's right but you know it's strongly am I related math? Am I? Am I? wait eric eric said it best the focus on ridicule could be. I can't do look, oh, um, look, look, <laughs> that. Look, exactly that, like him. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but look, that's strongly related, obviously, to the narcissism thing, which you before have pointed out is actually the key defining feature. Yeah. Grievance. I mean, we, we have to have that. Don't we have to have narcissism like self? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. We just, we might, we may. I would leave narcissism out of it and use things that I could um, more accurately like diagnose, which would be self aggrandizement and grievance mongering. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I can't diagnose narcissism. I would leave that yeah, out. That's, that's actually like a clinical term. Yeah. I would, I would, Yep. We may, I'm, and you're probably, you've probably caught, you know, you could probably be like, oh yeah, Dave, well, here's fucking 14 different clips where you called somebody a narcissist. Well, you know, <laughs> we're, uh, we're not as cautious as, uh, the, as decoding the gurus. <laughs> but we might need to consider whether we combine it with the grievance because it's almost a, it is like a the, package deal. But we have also publicly kind of disavowed everything we've like ever, ever said on separate. this show. Like you could be. An absolute least narcissistic arsehole, and yet not have a grievance narrative. Yeah, mm. I, I see your point. I guess you're they're, right. They're they're definitely like heavily correlated, but I I don't think they're intrinsically correlated. Like, does Taleb have a? I mean, he thinks everyone else is an idiot. And well, that's not a grievance yeah. thing at all. I thought of Taleb. I thought of Taleb too because he's kind of a bit of an exception. Um, yeah, he's like right, high on narcissism, extra. but is he like, is he complaining? Like his his grievance is just like the everyone else is not him. An idiot. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's been my grievance a lot of the time too. Everybody is that everybody else is stupid. Idiots. But uh, that, that, that's his time. That's that's his grievance. So, yeah. but that's you know, be really that's fun is if these guys then go out um, and do a show about us next. That'd be very fun. Though, <laughs> be like, here we're gonna take like a fucking three year old piece of your content and talk about it, asshole. Even Hitler, oh God. He, you know, they say every conversation. Even yeah, Hitler, yeah. I mean, it, it's. It was really he a narcissist? Is. I mean, I don't know enough about him. I would imagine that he certainly had a high self-image. Like, and he definitely, like, I would score him high on grievances. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> he had a couple of those. He had. But, he had a few. Um, yeah. It seemed. Mm. I mean, like, I guess anybody that's like the leader of a uh you know fascistic movement uh and sets themselves up 
as the supreme leader probably has to have an element of narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe, yes. Maybe. 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 Um, Not the benevolent okay. fascist. Well, I like, but I like can... keeping them s separate because I could imagine, like, yeah, imagine okay, we, that... yeah, no, I think you're right. We'll keep them separate. Like Russell Brand, for instance, is is pretty narcissistic, but he doesn't have. He doesn't really have grievance. Like he doesn't like. Oh, Russell uh, Brand's gonna be another one that's gonna be kind of hard for us to cover. I think when we get to that system. Oh but God, I've watched his system. content. It's so bad. System, like it, I, he complains about this. I mean, they all complain about the system. That's the thing. But, but I that's think true. their level of grievance is different like i would not put russell brand at the same level of grievance as eric weinstein yeah. like eric weinstein yeah. is yeah it's like so i i i, th I think you're eric right. weinstein is consumed the by grievance very much a personal narrative you know it's the, mm. uh, they have been wronged they've been wronged by these, and, and by uh, just extension society <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh okay all right um okay who are we Okay, so I've got galaxy okay, green, so cultishness, grievance, and narcissism. Oh, I would leave narcissism yeah, off so of it because I think be the, the galaxy yeah, brain, like yeah. thinking you're an expert in everything, and then the grievance, like sort of implies that without having to actually fucking call somebody a narcissist. Just from their point of view, again, from from our point of view, we can call people all kind of fucking names. <laughs> like we're mm -hmm. we're not, neither of us have a <laughs> neither of us have the word professor in front of our names in any context, so we don't have any of that shit to worry <laughs> about, you know. <laughs> yep yep okay uh, mm, okay so i'm wondering the next one we've got here is personal claims to revolutionary world altering theories but i'm wondering whether that might go into the with the guru galaxy brain the, the galaxy brain that, yeah i think that's the same one yeah, yeah he think he's right that, that <clears throat> having this personal it goes with claiming to be an expert in a billion different things if you're if you're an expert in a billion different things clearly you've, you've got revolutionary ideas of about at least two of them <laughs> yeah it kind of does right because like yeah you just yeah, just but, roll that into the first one and move on fellas well, well could we finesse it into like has a utopian uh like utopian vision is there anyone we've covered that doesn't have a utopian vision? <laughs> uh, hmm. Well, I mean, um, we, we, obvi we, obviously ContraPoints. She, she's the one that stands out every time. But even like even her, I think if you go deep enough into her material, you mm. will approach. Well, I, yeah, like a utopian esque um, view. What does he mean like by it has a like, utopian vision? It's like, yeah, that's unclear. I'm not sure I, this. Um, I think this I've revolutionized X, Y, or Z is like more clear than has a utopian okay. vision. Yeah, absolutely. But also, I, I've revolutionized X, Y, or Z galaxy brain. Yes, but not necessarily. I mean, uh, galaxy brain doesn't imply that. That implies galaxy brain. Right, but that's what I'm saying is I would just fold it. I'd fold this one in under the first one that they did, if I were. Okay. Luxury space communism, right? It, it's it's the end. Yeah, but the, the gay luxury space communism is a joke, Chris. <laughs> Especially when you add the dolphins for Posadism, it's a joke. And the other thing they're doing is like this, if they're going to do this little meter, right? That doesn't mean that like all of these things have to, in some way apply to everyone they talk about. What if like one of these things just doesn't apply to one of the people that they're de doing a decoding on? They're like, oh, we're going to go ahead and give you a zero on this one. That, that would, I think that would be fine if you were rating people on these, you know, this group of categories. of capitalist monopolies and uh i don't know that's just like, that's just common sense chris that's just what? clear thinking <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah and, um, by the way i have to I'm, i wanted to spring this on you in the next episode but i i can't resist we one of the reviews we got just said uh like have liam bright on you cowards <laughs> <laughs> Five stars, though. Let's, That's okay. great. I like that. That's really good. So, was it posted by Liam or? It didn't seem you... to be, unless Liam has created, you know, uh, like I, the username I, was uh, bizarre. And by the way, the guy that wrote I wouldn't really. Put it past, I would not put it past him. 
the person um, who wrote the genuinely the like the negative review that I want to surprise you with, so I won't like it's it's so negative. But uh, uh, the the username was I cough in your mouth. <laughs> 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 and the thing is, I'm pretty sure they didn't make that account, you know, just to write just because it's Apple, right? You have to uh, like have that account that that's your username. So <laughs> okay. we should read some more yeah, of our negative right. reviews. Well, well, what a character. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to that's gonna be good. Gonna be <clears> maybe at F300, very, we'll get uh, the media one trying to do that for us. At us and, and they detail in, in exquisite detail what we get wrong. It's, oh, uh, good. yeah, oh, it's good, enjoyable. Good. Oh, dear. Okay, where were we? Oh, utopianism. Um, Are well, we I don't know. Hmm. I'm looking at our list. I mean, someone like JP says... I mean, he doesn't have a utopian I mean, vision. And, right? and Jordan Peterson doesn't really either. Like, Jordan Peterson is just like, well, this is life. You've got to get used to it. It's always, it's always been like this. But then, so that, to me kind of that's okay because he's not necessarily like i think people he scores high in some areas but doesn't have like a super utopian vision james like, Lindsay I, doesn't have a utopian vision I, you know now you say that it's kind of giving me the opposite thing that maybe it's a dystopian uh <laughs> vision which is the, the like, what if they made it has a utopian or dystopian vision just has a star opian vision right like that that would be <laughs> fine right because this show we would score very high on that has a dystopian vision <laughs> like i liter it literally it's says great. literally says in my twitter profile dystopia beat the real thing is I think. to view the world as on the precipice of disaster and that's why the okay. girl is necessary right like james Lindsay is warning of the impending doom scott adams oh. is is telling oh. people about the danger and uh, like the oh well you know if if we decide to include it you could call it the cassandra cassandra complex i, I don't get this reference <laughs> <laughs> this is hard so you like this this is, like, this is like the little Indians and the big Indians all over. Yeah, again. which which I will note that many people seem to have been like, including philosophers, were like, "What the hell's not smoking?" What the hell? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's. Did you Google it? It's a thing. I didn't it just is, make it up. I, I've seen you shared your paper several times. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, but I so. Uh, yeah, I Cassandra. Well, who's Cassandra? Like, why have I not got this knowledge in my head? Is, is she? It's some mythical like figure who yeah. said the sky was yeah. falling or something like that. Yeah, it's a mythical figure. So she was cursed by the gods to. I don't remember the details, um, but <laughs> look at that. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Your yeah, hubris okay. has. Hang on, has just let me you. just let me quickly Google that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll have I have the right there for you. No, no, she she was cursed. She, she couldn't speak or something like that. Was unable to warn people, but. Or maybe she was able to warn people or something. But she she's she's the one who's, who's This is like who, wait, which which, better, which figure deeper. was like the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Was that Chicken Little that said the sky was falling? I think it might be the Chicken Little fucking complex. For more <laughs> like intellectually uh, advanced reference, Matt. She's mm. like the guy from isn't it Kroll? Where the Cyclops could this is a cyclops by the way it's a me miming a cyclops um yeah. they they could see the future but the only thing they could see was their own death oh god that's a okay but that's that's, that's from that's i'm great. not saying call it the i'm not saying no, call no. it the, the crawl i i agree the cassandra complex can, look can i just read this out to you yeah. it's a psychological I mean, the, it's a psychological phenomenon in which an individual's accurate prediction of a crisis is ignored or dismissed. So that, that reminds me what she was cursed. She was cursed to be able to see the future, be able to see what was going to happen. Like but no one, but no, like the Cyclops, but no one, but no <laughs> one. Would that one. <laughs> but, 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 but the curse was, is that no one would believe her. You know what I mean? She, she could, she could see what's happening. Well, this no one's one perfect, would, actually. I like then. It. It's perfect. It, and the fact that I'm completely unaware of the reference there's like a black hole in my mind i i kind of enjoy that as well so like why don't we call yeah. it the Ca cassandra complex yeah, yeah it was either that or chicken little or, that sounds you good know. to me all right yep. uh, put yep. it down yeah so, because it it's so it's a little bit different i want to distinguish it from the utopian vision uh, 
Well, you know, it could be, you know, you can, it'd still work for the utopian thing because you could, or are you thinking about having both of them? Um, no, I, I think we cut the utopian oh. one because like you say, it's it, like, it isn't an, a criteria and actually it's often more the warning. I think that's the more common thing. The utopian yeah. vision for the future, even, even like, and usually if you take a cult leader or, you know, like a genuine guru, any utopian vision comes with a dystopian warning. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. you can't like, have... like if like if like if you're a Scientologist, say right. Fuck yeah. You know, it's yes, you got a utopian <laughs> vision, but the the really oh Scientology point is is that you know the the world is just doomed unless we make this happen. So yeah, yeah, and um, I. And it's different. I sort of distinguish. Oh, it from it, I would call it clearing the planet. Do you think you're clearing the planet? What was, what was the number first one? What, what did we call brain. it? Galaxy brainedness. Yeah, because it's not just having bright ideas. It's about it's about how the the world actually is doomed unless unless we you know you take me seriously. Yeah. With, I, okay, you've made me think of something. You know, we have our tears like the aspiring I mean, leader like, syndrome. Like, so I might be, like, maybe ahead, but we have conspiracy. <laughs> Hypothesize it. Like you, th you think you would be the best guru. leader, but you also don't know how to lead. Galaxy Brain Guru, and <laughs> like we didn't pull them out of nowhere. Although, like that, you know, we were making them mostly for fun. But those make me think about that. Those three things we've already got Galaxy Brain covered, and we were kind of talking like, do we need revolutionary thinker? But I now thinking like just on the basis of those titles. I think conspiracy theorizing we're going to get to, which definitely has to be a a separate component. But revolutionary thinker, at least on the notion of you have a revolutionary theory, seems a an important criteria that mm -hmm. isn't the same as galaxy brain. Because galaxy brain can be that you have multiple takes on multiple subjects, but. Uh, do you have your bespoke Nobel Prize winning idea that, you know, deserves that has been suppressed by the system? That seems like a separate category. That's just Brett and Eric. Because mm. like, say, like, let's <laughs> right, say. I just call that the Brett and Eric factor. Gurus, like Sargon of a cat, right? He probably would score high on Galaxy Brain this. But does he have a revolutionary theory that will, you know, revise maths or uh, allow people to get to the stars? Like, no, right? But Brett and Eric do. And, yeah. uh, and like, other, other people, I, I would say, like, James Lindsay also has a single theory that, you know, can, can explain mm. everything in the world. Um, so that seems like a metric we might want, yeah. even though we kind of yeah. scratched it off earlier. Yeah, but doesn't it fall under this Cassandra so, thing they're talking um, about, where they 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 know the truth and nobody will so, listen to them? Yeah, I would say yeah. That's, that's Nobel. That's Nobel, roughly Nobel, the same I mean, thing. Nobel. No. I, um, hmm. um, you know I'm bad with the names, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> only about 15 no, no, minutes left um, of this. We'll go a little long this week and just watch the whole thing here. World shaking. No, you already have it. It's the Cassandra thing. You already got it, guys. You already got it. It's the it, it covers the thing you're talking about here. It's, it's I, I I know the shit and nobody's listening to me. Look, I mean, it's it's kind of the same. We're getting at the same thing as what we just talked about with the. We sort of shifted to the Cassandra thing, which is the mm. warning. But it's 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 that's the that's the same thing in a way. You know what I mean? Not that's just, yeah, it covers it. That this thing is desperately needed, you know? Like, but what, like this is probably, what this right here is probably like, why we're never going to have a production meeting. Sargon of Akkad or someone. I'm sure he has the Cassandra complex thing. I'm sure he's warning about society collapsing. Jordan Peterson is. But mm. does Jordan Peterson have a revolutionary theory about how to fix things? I guess not. Yeah. Jordan Peterson espouses yeah, Christian it's... philosophy <laughs> as a way to... Well, it's, well, it's kind uh, of a theory, isn't and it? Does, JP so, well, I, does he consider no, it a way to not. better the world? He, I mean, I know he espouses Christian philosophy. Yeah, I don't know, because he's the problem, and again, <clears throat> that's the problem with a lot of these people that we cover and that they cover, is that they never actually get to the fucking point. 
So you have. I mean, to- he did write a book of like telling young men how to be men, oh, as if he, he knows does this for Adams? anything. No, um, no, no. He's okay. Like, he's, I, he's just he, he's just a pit of negativity he doesn't have anything he, ha- he, he has those books like I, you know losers speak and i was like oh, yeah God, i don't even it, it makes me physically cringe to think about him but yeah, they, they, loser think yeah but you know they're very similar to jordan peterson's books aren't they where they it's a it's it's a personal recipe to help you navigate this corrupt world it's mm. not it's not a it's not a plan to make the world a better place yeah words like rutger bregman would score high but like, he does uh yeah, he does he a, does uh, like market so it as something that would apply to literally any the utopian uh like anyone within his demographic uh which for jordan peterson is like young men so he jordan peterson markets it as this will help l- literally any young man and right, I think in that tw- way, it is kind of like a, this is the way to fix the world kind of thing. Some kind of a set of revolutionary ideas, even though that none of it is new and some of it's really weird. Vision thing. Cause like a revolutionary theory usually implies yeah. some ut- yeah. utopian thing, but it doesn't have to, right? Like the Brett Weinstein's belief that he discovered a fundamental flaw in like that doesn't lead to a utopian future, right? Like at best, it leads to slightly better drug testing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking about stick the, okay, stick it. I'm thinking about the uh, amount uh, of so, people that have alternative theories about evolution, for example. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's but that's that's galaxy brainedness, isn't it? But not yeah. necessarily, because like they could be focused just on that topic, right? There could be an intelligent design guy who just focuses on evolution. Oh right, all oh, right, right. And they have, so they do have some, you know, intelligent design thing, like Michael Behe, right? Like, I would put him as a guy that has a that thinks he's a revolutionary thinker, but he doesn't have like takes on tons of. I mean, he probably does, but nobody listens to them about tons of other topics yeah well i reckon uh, as you said this is not carved in stone we should we should get them down yes and yes move on sorry, so, sorry, sorry. so i reckon yes write it okay. write it down We've got it for the minute yep okay okay the next one's about the style yeah the pseudo profound bullshit <laughs> yeah, that like yeah. that, that was yes. self that, uh, self-explanatory and entirely vibes based. Just call it Chopraism. You know, Dan Dan brought that up about the ability to speak in metaphors and to He did. And and that, that struck me as like a pretty insightful Literally you can't and, tell like, you know the difference that, between like, like something that Deepak Chopra says and something that that like Deepak Chopra bot generates. It isn't all of them, but the people who are perhaps the most gurish have this like ability to really like just monologue yeah. in endless <laughs> metaphors. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's astonishing, isn't it? Um and that yeah, that yeah, coincides so as cool. well with like cult leaders. Like cult leaders always have that ability. Right. They to just go on forever and say absolutely nothing. And a lot of it is pseudo profound bullshit. Yep. <laughs> but, um, so. Pseudo profound. Yeah, that one, that one, that one's a gimme. You don't even, you, it's self explanatory and completely vibes based. Phrase like this can be titled by a short phrase. Um, mm. so pseudo profound bullshit. I say name it Chopraism. I think. It's accurate. Because, like, Deepak Chopra was the fucking master yeah. at that. It's a profound bullshit. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Okay, yep. we got it. Okay, cool. Oh, um... Hmm. So, the next one's a bit... Um, okay, let's... let's um, okay, the, the last two are pretty easy, but this one's a bit tricky. Because this one is about this, um, this courting controversy behavior. Oh, Man, yeah. they're insightful humans. Mm. <laughs> Once upon a time, that we, were, we, uh, 
in yeah. 2020. Um, yeah, yeah the, like that feels like a binary thing, though. Like a, the you know, because I'm I'm kind of noting what is, there's there's like a term for someone, um, you know, like someone in class who's always starting drama, you know, in high school, like oh, are high they school a drama, drama queen? Drama queen, yeah. <laughs> are they a drama queen? Yeah. Like f- Jordan Peterson is absolutely a drama queen. Right, right. I would just use, I would use our, is this person a drama queen? Yep. Like tick boxes that we, because there's no reason that we can't have them in, right? We can't have a, a mixed thing and courting like a trial by far or controversy courting seems um, like a yes or no. Mm. That's why you use drama yeah. queen and you can do one to five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the other tricky thing about it is it's often happening offline, like it's all happening via other channels. It's not necessarily in the content that we cover. So it's not sort of a, I can, you know what I mean? I can yeah. get now also think of a text box, like, have they been cancelled? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could be anything. Yeah, yeah. If it, it, like when it comes to the tick boxes, all bets are off. You can just check anything again that seems fun because... Uh, like, do they try to get cancelled? But I, I agree. It's kind of hard to imagine that on a like like yeah okay i'm gonna devil's advocate like you know jordan peterson Um, will go out of his way to like break the tos for like some social media site just so that he can claim that he's being canceled right and i maybe 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 drama queening isn't the best one there i think courting controversy might be too um broad because i mean like we do it and to some extent the hosts of the show we're watching also do it just by the nature of what they're covering because they're maybe cancel chasing cancel chasing like ambulance chasing but it's a cancel yeah. chasing <laughs> uh, so like if you take like james Lindsay, nye he's, cancel he's bait like, courting controversy constantly sitting like, count in the chat says that cancel that bait could, that's good you know, basically if you looked at this feed, you might, you would just see, you know, stuff, culture war stuff. But like recently he's, he's gone all out to just, you know, insult people and to say controversial things and to talk about controversial topics. And so it definitely seems that there's a change there, right? Like, and that there are people. Yeah. I think that's a really good term. Cancel baiting. And people who don't. Oh, yeah. oh dear Matt, like it do. Yeah. I've kept you up here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a quarter pa- it's a quarter past one. I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing I, pretty well. And you know what they say I, about I, Jordan I Peterson? He's a master cancel baiter. The last ones to let you sleep. <laughs> I feel like we're almost there. Yeah, so we'll put a pin in that one. That one can be a can be a tag or something. Um, okay. You can mull it over. Last two are easy though, I think, because we already talked about them. Um conspiracies. Endorsing okay. conspiracy, conspiracy theories, mongering. pushing conspiracy theories, conspiracy mongering. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, easy. Um, and that narcissism. We've already got narcissism. Oh, do we? Yeah. So if we were to stop there, we would have it. Great. That's a good number. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and then, so, like, if we put them on one to five, like, just that makes a score to 40, right? Isn't that right? My math, so. <laughs> it's quarter past one in the morning, so I'm not sure about anything anymore. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I think it's just... <laughs> um, yeah, no, that sounds good. Out of five. Yep, five stars uh, for each By one. the way, Patreon people, just look. This is the sacrifices that Matt makes for you. And also that yeah. I force Matt to... Oh, wait, they said morning, but they, it's just past midnight where right, they're right. at. Uh, I, children. Because said it's come, <laughs> he said quarter past like, one or something. Like, so they weirded It would have been way life. more boss move if it was like nine in the morning and they both had classes to teach at like 11 and they were like drinking beer and whiskey and shit on their fucking... <laughs> My children unhelpfully did not go to sleep until very late. So... Hmm. 
and he's an hour ahead of me. So it's mm. it's now quarter past midnight for me, but I'm okay. But mm. the, at quarter past one, I might be yeah, uh, like, yeah. F- a, bit, right. a bit more. So yeah. it's uh, like Chris. Yeah. Chris is like one. Hour, he's got one hour on me and about ten years. So <laughs> with those two advantages, that's, that's I think right. so. Yeah. Uh, okay, but um. they, so look, this is what that two two dollars provides. <laughs> <laughs> they have a two dollar tier on, tier on know, Patreon. I Maybe they're grifting you somehow. <laughs> I just, you know, I just want all the listeners. If if we do release this, I am like available like any time. I'm super flexible. Of I've, I've got very very few commitments. But the only time that Chris is available is at god awful times. It's like. It's like no. before the sun comes up in the morning or after <laughs> after midnight at I'm night. Kind of like a vampire. When everyone else is sleeping. Right. That's like a vampire existence. I do apologize for that, but I, I, I appreciate the the sacrifices you make uh on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well this is a, a good a time uh, to let this go as any. So <clears throat> Uh, I thought that would be interesting, and I had uh, for a minute there, I was like, "Uh oh, I, I made a bad choice." But it started to get a little more fun. It just kind of noticing like the differences in like like how they're trying to do what they're doing versus uh, what we're doing here is kind of a lot of fun, actually. We should see if they have published that, and if they have published that, we should uh, ask them if they're cool with us, you know, using that. Yeah, I mean, I would just like to I, there since since Chris has been an online friend of mine for a while, I'd like to just steal it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but I also don't yeah, think that we like, do that too. <laughs> I also don't. I think that we we end up covering a lot of that ground, like in the middle of what we're doing. Right? I don't think that we. I don't think that like our format is really is get, is served really well by at the end going through and like doing a checklist and giving people points. Yeah, I would say so, but at least we could uh point to that and say like, "Oh, this you know is a good indication of this part on the, you know, the eight measures of guruness." <laughs> What would be really fun that we're not going to do would be to like measure the content we just watched and the eight factors that they just fucking talked about. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't. Well, I, hey, I only claim to be an expert in one thing, n- n- and ta- it's not something I talk about on this show. But no, no, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I'm talking about the thing that we just watched. It would be fun oh, okay. to like measure <laughs> the, the 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 thing we just watched on those eight factors. But they wouldn't. They'd score zero on all of them, I think, because they they didn't do any of it. So there yeah. you go. They got a zero. <laughs> I, I figured it out. We don't have to itemize it or anything. And we ended up not Wait, going. They they did talk about their two dollar tier on Patreon, so they get one star in that one category. <laughs> I thought they ditched Grifter. Anyway, I forget. I don't know if they ditched the Grifter factor, but yeah, they okay. If 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 Grifter was one of them, then I got a one out of forty because they mentioned yep. their Patreon. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, that was those you know I, like i said uh, about five or ten minutes into it i was like oh this is gonna be really boring but then they got into like the things that they were talking about and it was kind of interesting for us to kind of compare and contrast especially like how we talk about the same behaviors and how they like sort of went to, they kind of went to like some length to make sure that they were accurately describing it while while still having you know easily easily digestible and sort of fun categories whereas we don't do that we we do nothing approaching that so uh shout out to that show uh i don't always agree with everything they say but they're you know uh more moderate generally uh they have like a more moderate take on things than i generally do and they're not as like overtly as polit overtly political as we are and this show is far more overtly political than decoding the gurus is and uh that's fine um it is it is nice to have um an anthropologist and a psychologist more or less saying a lot of the same things we're saying about the people we're uh, uh, hurling ad hominem attacks at. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next week, there's some I, legitimate criticism that we throw in between the ad hominem attacks. I think the ad hominem attacks are like a, a backstopped by legitimate criticism. <laughs> there's a foundation. There's a foundation there. So uh, next week, I think we're doing, we're going to go with uh, Michio Kaku next week. 
Okay. Um, the, I think we're going to run into some problems with that because he is, I believe, a theoretical physicist, and you would probably claim to have more uh, scientific literacy in the area of theoretical physics than I would. But if you tried to demonstrate that that literacy on my show, I would tell you to shut up. So, <laughs> because you're not a theoretical physics. I am not an physics. expert in theoretical phys- physics. We're, I am not even a novice in theoretical physics. I'm interested in it. So... <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> so, anyway, if you want to hear more high quality banter where I just neg my hosts, make sure you follow us on Twitch, <laughs> twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. And for once, I'm going to read my own show out. This has been the Intellectual Dollar Tribute to the show live every Wednesday. Uh, twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. You can support this project at eplex.store by buying merch or getting uh, Patreon like subscriptions there. Also, patreon.com slash echoplex. And there's one thing I always forget to mention. When we're not live, go to eplex.xyz or search for Echoplex Radio on the TuneIn app, and you can listen to and request all these fucking songs that you hear on this show that you're like, I like that song. Well, you go find it. And um, with that, this is one of those songs. This is one of the most popular ones here. This is Boomer's by Periscope. I'm going to change the contents of my drink and change the color of the lighting in here. We'll come back with more of our uh, usual fare. Thanks for listening, everybody.
get enough Echoplex and want to keep the conversation going with the hosts and community when we're not live? Then join our Discord server at discord.me slash Echoplex. We have text channels, voice channels, meme repositories, and a whole section of screenshots that we don't even remember where they came from. Come join the Now Space on Discord at discord.me slash Echoplex.